The idea of spiritual growth is one that's tossed around a lot. But I think we have a hard time figuring out what that means. If, for example, someone has memorized more Bible verses than I have, does that mean they're somehow further along in the faith growth track than I am? Okay, well, then let's say what happens when I read the entire Bible and memorize a lot of it for good measure. Have I somehow arrived at spiritual perfection? Or maybe in the back of your mind, you start to think, will everything start going well in my life if I just surround myself with the most wholesome people? The idea of growth is one thing, but when we attach it to the idea of spirituality, it can no doubt be confusing. Today, I invite you to think about a time when you've been stuck on something. I have an example and it might seem a little random, but hang with me for a second. Uh, my husband Hans grew up playing the card game cribbage. If any of you are cribbage players, I'm guessing you know other cribbage fanatics. I have yet to meet any people who are on the fence about this. They either love it or they hate it. And Hans and I were married for probably 15 years before he taught me how to play it all. I remember watching someone play once and thinking, that is way too complicated for me. That is too much math. I for sure thought it was gonna be too hard. But Hans wanted to teach our kids to play, so I figured if a fourth grader could learn, so could I. Eventually, yes, I learned how to play cribbage. But let me tell you, for many years I was not a fanatic. I'd agree to play mostly because I knew it was important to Hans and he was a super patient teacher. But without fail, I'd end the game as a flustered, frustrated student. I was slow in my counting, I felt like the rules were weird, and I lost every single game. And here's what frustrated me most. I wished that I could buy a book or find a website that taught me all the facts about cribbage. I know something like there is out them, something like that is out there, but I wanted to read them and then become instantly good. And I know that saying this out loud sounds ridiculous, but subconsciously, I wanted to follow the plan, X, Y, and Z in the rules in order to figure it all out once and for all. I assumed that results would come in my favor once I followed the steps. Why am I telling you this silly story about a card game? Well, maybe some of you like me are wanting results. You're wanting growth. You're wanting noticeable change simply by following certain steps. You're stuck and you're not sure what's next, but you'd like someone to simply tell you how to be unstuck. At some point, we start to think that if we're stuck, it must mean plain and simple we are doing something wrong. Just look at the New York Times bestseller list. You can find plenty of books about a million different topics relating to self-help, everything you could ever want to go right in your life, all the growth you could ever hope for. So how does this translate to our story of faith? Well, I wonder if our focus on growth is tied to a focus on achievement, a focus on somehow winning or accomplishing something. I know that for me, when I'm stuck, I get anxious. I obsess about how to move beyond my point of being stuck. I try and rush as quickly as humanly possible to move on. I want to put whatever thing is keeping me stuck in the rear view mirror. I figure that any growth that I'm doing will stamp out the feeling of being stuck. And in faith, I think that I need to have all the answers in place in order for my spiritual growth to happen. And those answers, if they're just at my fingertips, I feel like all I need to do is work harder or faster. Author Mike Iaconelli puts it this way, spiritual growth is not running faster as in more meetings, more Bible studies, more prayer meetings. Spiritual growth happens when we slow our activities down. That seems to suggest that growth happens in the middle of our stuckness that we're trying to get out of. If you open your Bibles with me today to Matthew 11, we hear Jesus say these words to his disciples, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus is inviting us to sit in the stuckness with him, to discover that growth can happen not only when we're sprinting around, but sometimes when we're hitting pause. When we're stuck, 
but we're looking around us and noticing the people and the places that are actively influencing us at that moment to realize that it's not always growth in order to instantly win, but it's practice. And sometimes that means losing along the way too. So today, as you think about this idea of spiritual growth, ask yourself these questions. When have you felt stuck in your faith? How could spiritual practice differ from growth? And what would it look like for you to hit pause instead of to sprint in your faith journey? Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.